Okay, so I've got a little bit of a head and uh, not done any recording. And as you can see, I've got the uh, drive side half a uh, third of the crankcases on. And uh, I'm just about to put the other side in. I've also attached the um, uh, two outer connecting rods with new bearing shells. Um, they have to be put on before the crank cases can go on so they're on and the camshafts are both in uh, and uh, there you are you can see I also put new bearings in um, the crankcases yesterday so they're in there uh, and there's the other um, crankcase third ready to go in I've put um, some jointing compound on the um, on the crankcase, and um, there's a new outer race in um, in here that I put, that I also put in yesterday. Both both out these um, outer crankcase thirds I um, heated up in the oven and then put the uh, uh, taped the old ones out and put the new ones in. This uh, dark stuff here is graphogen which I've used on the main bearing uh, shells, the big end bearing shells and these are the on the camshafts you can see they're graphogened up. So I'm just about to put this uh, crankcase third back on. These cardboard tubes I've put around the connecting rods um, to protect them um, from uh, being knocked about. I don't want any uh, knocks or dings in the um, in the sides of the connecting rods because that can raise a stress area and um, which can um, cause the connecting rod to break under stress. Uh, there's also a new o-ring in here same on the other side so a new o-ring there there's the new bearing um, that I put on the crankshaft earlier uh, and uh, remember to get the, uh, the it's good practice to get the inner bearing and the outer bearing uh, orientated the way they were packed um, so which basically is with the writing on the inner race on the outside and the writing on the outer race on the outside so we just offer this up and uh, also remember that there are a pair of dowels to align the crankcase very important they are mustn't be missing and same on the other side a pair of dowels to align up the crankcase hole, uh, thirds very important that is so I'll just slip that on before I do that I'm going to put a smear of oil inside the um, the bearing. I know I've got uh, graphogen on the um, um, cams but it won't hurt to put a smear of oil on the bearing as well. And then we'll slip that into place. It's a gentle tap with the shaft of the hammer. Okay. 
Okay. So we're just going to put the um, the long bolts in. There is an Allen screw that goes in here. And uh, in these bolts, go in. So I'm going to pull these, this, this crankcase up gently and easily onto the crankcase, onto the uh, inner casing. There should be hardly any resistance at all putting this on and just do it a little bit at a time. Putting it in, I'm not putting any load on the um, casing at all, which should pull up very, very easily. All we're pushing against is the resistance of the dowels going into the inner casing to give it precise alignment. We're nearly there. Okay, pretty much home now. So I've just nipped those bolts and what we need to do is to ensure that we can turn the cams which we can yep. we turn fine and we should also be able to rotate the crank which it does Okay, it shouldn't be any effort required to rotate the crank. You can keep those cardboard tubes in place just to stop the pond rods from hitting on the crank on the crankcase. And then we need to tighten up um, the bolts. In each instance. To the correct torque setting. We're just setting the torque wrench here, which is uh, to 12 foot pounds. We'll start off by just pulling this one up, and then I'm going to go to one that's more or less diagonally opposite and work my way around
sure, just go around them again, make sure that they're all done up. And then we've got the two studs at the top to do up as well. Make sure the crank turns, which it does. Make sure the cams turn, which they do. So that's all set up. <laughs> 